month, we got Star Trek to talk about. And my opening card isn't working. Fine, do it manually. There we go. Did I delete Twitter? I did not delete Twitter. Also, hello everyone. I am still Becca Random 42. Sound effects are not going to be popping up just yet, but you know what is? Star Trek and how gay Vulcans are, apparently. Since this is one thing I can talk about until they decide that the B in the alphabet isn't good enough to talk about the LGBT stuff, the potential for queerness in Vulcan culture. Really? 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 Now the jiggle cam's working. Now everything's... <sighs> we also have a jiggle cam when we do have super chats or whatever. Cancel Mecca. Just cancel Mecca. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> cancel Mecca. I gotta cancel Mecca again. Video time. We are recording this live. So anything you do say might pop up in a super chat. And that's why we're gonna get all the flubs. And all the... Yeah. T'Pol was not queer, hell no. No, she wasn't. Neither was Sarek. But one fan reflects on how Vulcan names break from the gendered community. All right. Th th that they're aliens. Oh, are, did did it, idiocracy actually happen, didn't it? I like science. I like money. Yeah. I like science. I like turtles. I like science. I like big butts and I cannot lie. I like science. I like this one. Idiocracy happened. They're worried about gender specific names for aliens. For aliens. <sighs> this is so fucking cool. It is fucking cool. So sorry. It's an alien. It's an alien. It's still an alien. No matter what you do, it's always going to be an alien. And uh, I, I, I don't know. Don't give me the Star Trek crap. It's too early in the morning. <laughs> <sighs> Star Trek. One van reflects on how Vulcan's name, not Vulcan names break from gender conformity. Well, if you need a whole article to tell you that they're fucking aliens, then I can't help you. But here we go. This is on Star Trek's official.com thing. Thingus? Oh, and Star Trek Las Vegas is moving to December. Hey, if you guys want to send me to Star Trek Las Vegas this year, let me know. I would gladly, gladly go and laugh at all the crazy this year. No, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> who am I kidding? I'm sure they wouldn't even allow me in the building at this point. One of the most utopian ideals presented in all of Star Trek is the philosophy of infinite diversity and infinite combinations, a.k.a. the Idic. That is a Vulcan thing that if anybody who knows anything about Star Trek knows, and it's more than just a cool necklace. An acknowledgement and celebration of the expansive expansiveness of lives, experiences, and elements in the universe. While Idic was deliberately introduced into the original series, one of the most beautiful examples of this principle in action was accidental. Vulcan names, as they have been developed, as they have been developed, over the course of Star Trek's history, allow for a thrillingly queer reading of Vulcan culture. Guess what, though? Guess what? According to Vulcan culture, homosexuality might be illogical because it does not provide guess what guess what procreation procreation so so i'm sure there are gay vulcans out there who i'm sure there's something like that but but this is one of those things that you don't really need to kind of go in and explore because you just need to treat society like it's an alien society <sighs> these people a 1966 memo to Gene Roddenberry from producer Robert Justman laid out the first set of rules for proper Vulcan names. He suggested that all Vulcan names begin with the letters SP and end with the letter K. All names have a total of five letters in them, no more, no less. While the rest of this memo of the series quickly sees on to some more amusing possibilities like Spunk, Spank, and Spork, or I call him, like, like, like with new Spock, I call him Spuck. Short in matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral. You are the very model of the modern major general. Because <laughs> he's about as Spock as anything, you know? He, he's about as Spock as Bud the Chud was. So, Spock the Cuck, is that what we call Maybe, maybe. Don't call him that. Bad Mecca. Cancel Mecca. Mecca said a bad thing again. Cancel Mecca. <sighs> 
Not only that, okay, I'm going to stop them before they get into this. To pow. To pow. All right. If you've seen any original series or know any 80s music, you know there's a character called To pow in a Vulcan society. And if you're just kind of a casual normie viewer, you're going to be like, oh, the female Vulcans have the T and the apostrophe and the P. And then the males are. But then not always the case now, is it? Because we see a lot of different. Well, <sighs> The basic idea of this proposed rule did make it into, or did make it into the show canon. It did not wind up being quite so restrictive as writers and producers insisted on the initial SP as opposed to a simple S to start with the names of Vulcans such as Sarek, Cybok, and Satok, and Surok all met with most of the criteria. Yeah, and you can go in as far as like Savik and um. <clears throat> oh, who's the Vulcan on on? Who was the Vulcan? Well, no, then you got Tuvok. What about Tuvok? Ugh. The naming conventions of Vulcan women are less explicitly codified, but there are some clear patterns to them as well. Vulcan female names are not restricted by length or by final letter, but they do tend to start with the letters T P, T apostrophe P, like to Paul, to Pan, to Pow, and to Pring. It seems clear. See, this just seems like they're all. Cleaning materials to pring for your spring cleaning needs. All your spring cleanness. It seems clear from looking at the list of Vulcan names over the history of Star Trek that there are some fairly rigid gendered naming conventions in Vulcan society. However, in a fascinating and wonderful turn of events, just as many, if not more, Vulcans break these conventions rather than follow them. That's because it was a hard guideline to keep and making, keep making new Vulcans with these names. All right, all right, yeah, there's some guidelines that, that go, you, they're just, there's, this is arguing semantics again. This is just arguing semantics so they can go and make their little narrative on how Vulcans are, all oh, right, oh my God. And, and what does this have to do with the queerness in Vulcan culture? It has nothing to do with it. Lieutenant Savick, who appeared in Star Trek films 2, 3, and 4, is played by women and uses the she-her pronouns because nobody gave a crap about these little stupid pronoun things. That is because this is a new modern concept of people needing to put themselves into these little boxes to further separate our society and culture so that, guess what, guess what? The people who actually own everything can know exactly who they're marketing things to. Ah, it is not an inclusive measure. It is not anything to make people feel represented. or No, no, no. It is for marketing purposes only. That is why people are out there putting these pronouns in there. They, they might think that they're doing it because they're being progressive, because they're being all this. No, what does this do? This tells all of the advertisers, this tells Google and Twitter and Facebook everything that they need to know about you. They know what gender you identify as, what clubs you belong to, what political affiliation you're associated with, and where, all, where you buy all your crap. They know everything they need to know about you based on these little broken down marketing tactics. That's all this is. This is not for diversity. This is not for equality or progressiveness. This is only to further separate everybody and put everybody into their little own box because this whole giant game of Wokemon, Wokemon is nothing more than marketing. They're not doing this because they care about you. They're not doing this because it represents you. They're not doing this because it speaks to you specifically. They're doing this as a marketing point. And if anybody still and if anybody still doesn't know that, then I don't know what to tell them. And I'm choking here. <sighs> Where's New Warriors? We'll get to that after Star Trek. <sighs> and that's another one that's going to have a lot more of that reference, too. But has a name that follows most of the masculine naming conventions. Well, that's because that's because somebody said, hey, let's make an alien sounding name that sounds like Spock and Sarek. That's why we have Savik, because they forgot about T'Pol. And you're just going back with coincidental sort of and oh, hey, T'Pol and T'Pow and T'Pring. Yeah, that's because they're trying to create character names in a series. They don't care. and They're not thinking that far ahead about, oh, and it's going to break this the gender and social constraint. No, no, no. They're trying to make an alien name. It's not always this big mass diversity push, especially with when you got, what, Star Trek 2, Savik, Kirstie Alley. <sighs> She's playing an alien for fu oh. 
Mistral, a Vulcan explorer in the mid-20th century, I'm saying your name wrong, who appeared in the episode Enterprise is played by a man and uses he, him pronouns. Well, they weren't using pronouns. They didn't think about that because they weren't all into these little marketing checkboxes now, were they? And doesn't follow either gendered pattern for his name. To class as one of Sirach's students, it was referred to as a he and him pronoun, while his name begins with a typically feminine construction. This, you're, you're assigning these human today modern standards you're connecting a bunch of dots here that you had a little bit thing laid out once upon a time and as time evolved as things do guess what they throw all that out the window and they're like you know what sounds like a cool vulcan name tuvok tuvok sounds like a good name for a vulcan let's make tuvok sorok sounds like a good name for for this vulcan we're gonna have the cult of sorok coming into enterprise these people the article stupid well, the article writer's stupid this on its own might not be enough to suggest a queerness as an integral part. Well, you're making a lot of stretches just to make it in for a Pride Month article. That's what you're doing. After all, if Vulcan parents are giving their children non gender non-conforming names, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with a child's relationship to their own gender. You're thinking too much about it. It's, it's illogical to care at this point. Because guess what? Like I said in the beginning, Vulcans would view sex as a logical way to procreate and nothing more. They're not out there doing it for identity politics. They're not out there doing it to fit into a box. They're not out there doing it for woke points. And they would see all of th this shit right here is why we don't have the aliens landed. This article right here, Drange Lunatic, $2 super chat. So did Mr. Spunk handle the captain's log? Absolutely. He absolutely did. <sighs> Thank you so much. See, th this is why, and I was pull up, I was pull up this clip, this Dax makeout clip. Because we already kind of evolved past that in Star Trek. And the fact that you're kind of going in and finding and inserting today's idiotic ideals and ideolo ideological divisionist tactics into a futuristic series that was not about this. It was more about, okay, well, Vulcans are very logical. You don't really have to dig that deeply into it. And you certainly don't want to humanize Vulcans by inserting your, your preferences and your assumptions onto a society that is alien and fictional and fictional. And how dare you? That is so entitled. Uh, you have no idea how entitled that is. However, it's been repeatedly established in canon that Vulcan names are essentially unpronounceable by non-Vulcans. Fuck it up. Even with the help of the Universal Translator, Spock says so in the original series and the animated series. Amanda mentions years of struggle to pronounce her own Vulcan name that was given to her when she married Sarek. Since we don't know these characters by their Vulcan given names, then your whole article is moot! I do wonder how these characters came by their second names. You're reading too much into it. It's so that we could pronounce them as an audience. It's so that you can make it a little bit more alien sounding for a science fiction TV series. Get your head out of your ass, pers person who wrote this article. Could it be that these names that they chose themselves and are doing so are deliberately reflecting their relationship to their own gender or queerness? No, it's not. You're an idiot and stop inserting your own crap into this. Stop. As a queer Star Trek fan, I didn't ask you. When I realized that Vulcan names might be following and breaking the gendered rules, well, maybe you're looking too much into it. Maybe you're looking too much for something to make yourself feel justified in your own queerness, right? Maybe you're looking a little too far into it. Maybe you are, maybe you're projecting something that was never there before. Because what about Tuvok? What about Tuvok? He wasn't gay. Now, was he? He had a wife. Yeah, he did. So your whole argument goes out the window. To Paul was not any, she, she was in a, she was supposed to be married to one Vulcan, ended up actually falling in love with Trip as much as a Vulcan can really fall in love. But having that sort of connection on the electrochemical level. I was filled with a joy at the wonderful ideas that this would indicate about Vulcan society. Here's a planet and culture full of fascinating, nuanced characters living all sorts of lives while exemplifying a whole spectrum of gender expressions. No, they weren't. That's illogical for you to assign this ideological crap onto a Vulcan society, you stupid person. I think my love of the queer community and the people I know and love, and I see us making the same sort of decisions about how we pre present ourselves as Vulcans, might be making with their name. Well, you're not a Vulcan. You're a human. 
You're just a little dirty, filthy human, right? That's all you are. How do we want people to see us? Smarter than you are presenting yourself, woman. Seriously. How do we want the world to know and remember us? Do we want to throw our lot in with any one gender convention or multiple conventions or none of them? I want to evolve past this bullshit that separates people. I want people to wake up and realize that that's all marketing tactics. And it is all a way to get an article out here for June for Pride Month. That's all this is. When I think about Star Trek as a vision of a utopian future, this Vulcan tradition of gender non-conforming names stands out to me as one of the best. Well, you, you, you're... You're making this up, though. You're making up something that's not even there. You are just deciding that that's what it is because you want it to be so. You're reading too much into it. Seriously, get get stuff. Just get bent. I'm tired of this. Beyond the rich possibilities for representation, I always find it profoundly satisfying, blah, blah, blah. You're just, just rambling on and on. Choosing a non-gender conforming name can be very visible. Who cares? Who cares? You know what? That This is just what? So Michael Burnham is supposed to be gay because she was in love with the male Klingon because she has a non-gender conforming name. I had a teacher named Michael when I was a kid and it was a woman. And this was in the very, very early 80s. So guess what? Guess what? You're not that progressive. You're not that interesting. You're not that groundbreaking. This has been done before. You're reading too much into it. And Julia Peterson is a queer Jew Jewish journalist currently based in Regina, Saskatchewan. She also writes for INK Magazine. <sighs> and she has a pet Tribble. You know what? I have a pet Fizz gig who will eat your Tribble for breakfast because... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Did I, did, I, did I just break your narrative and tell you how you're not actually that special, you're not that interesting, you're not that important, you're reading too much into this, it's not speaking directly to you, but if you can find some sort of representation and comfort in this, more power to you. Just, just stop trying to lower Star Trek to your level. I'm going to go back to my live chat. What are you guys saying about this? The mental gymnastics is astounding, astounding in this article, Morbid Fury says. On behalf of Canada, sorry. It's so cute. Karen wrote this article. Uh, <laughs> I'm ashamed of, to share a species with these asshats. Oh, I know. Hail Fizz Gig. And thank you so much for subscribing. I can't read that, but thank you so much. You know what? Screw it. You get a jiggle for... I, I don't have a brawn, but I can kind of go underneath. I'm going back to my live chat. Don't go anywhere, everybody. 